<laughs> hey, what's up you guys? Shardimus Prime here doing another Diamond Select Toys action figure review set on the Wave 1 Pulp Fiction Diamond Select Toys, Jules Winfield, Butch Coolidge, and Marsalis Wallace figures. If you're trying to pick these up, you can get them up. Big, big, big. Get your big badass toys at BigBadToyStore.com. Click the link in the description below. And big thanks to Diamond Select Toys for making this review possible. If you want to see the latest from them, be sure to check the link in the description below to their YouTube channel and finally we have the Pulp Fiction figures anyway on the side of each of these you can see the action figures face right there so that's pretty neat they all have very good likenesses I like that and on the very back you can see read up so on the read up for Jules you can go ahead and pause it now and then there's a read up for Butch you can go ahead and read it pause it now and then for Marcellus Wallace you can go ahead and read it pause it now and then you can see the other figures from available from each on the back of the packaging so let's get to it and crack these things open and here's all three figures out of the packaging and I think Diamond Select did a great job with these figures. I've actually been enjoying them for quite some time now. I am waiting for a bunch of figures to show up in the mail so I'm reviewing some older figures this week and I've been having a great time with them since I've had them and they've been around for a while now. So let's get a closer look at these guys. They do come with some accessories so I like that. Let's get a closer look at those bases first and then we'll get a closer look at the figures. So the Jules figure comes with a piece of Brett's apartment over here. We get this little diorama. You can see the little bed that Flock of Seagulls was sleeping on, or it was a couch anyway, and then we have some Big Kahuna Burger right over here. It doesn't have the same deco as the actual Big Kahuna Burger that we saw in the movie. It's just, you know, a generic stripe. Then we get this little burger. It actually has some nice details on it. You can see the cheese on there. You get the burger and the bun and the lechuga looking pretty good. Then we also get the little cup of Sprite right over here. Again, it doesn't have the Big Kahuna Burger logo. It's just this generic red stripe. And you can see some paint smudging right there from him holding it. And then you also get a half-eaten uh, Big Kahuna Burger. This was Brett's burger right over here. So I think that's pretty sweet. But going back to the base, I think they did a really good job capturing the details right over here. I think this looks really good. I like how there's some texturing right over there on the carpet. And we also have the wall right here with some bullet holes in it. You get a light switch and you get some silver paint apps over there. I think they did a pretty good job with this. Nothing going on in the back or anything. And then Jules also comes with his own gun right here, looking pretty good. I like it. Nice silver paint right over there. And it does fit into his hand pretty well too. So you gotta give Jules a gun. See we get the finger right through the trigger hole. So that's pretty nice. And the other hand has a much wider grip that's meant for holding either the drink right here or you can get him holding the burger. And this does come with a little clear rubber band around the drink. But yeah, he holds either of them just fine on his own without that rubber band. And then Marcellus Wallace comes with this base where we get some concrete or some pavement and everything. So this is the street that he's walking across when... Uh, was it Butch runs into him and I think they did a really good job with this I really like that texturing and we get some nice paint applications throughout on here looking very good and it does connect to the Butch base but I first want to show off the other accessories that come with Marcellus Wallace you can see the briefcase right here which contains the soul of Marcellus Wallace is that it like did we ever get real confirmation on any of that stuff but anyway we also get the same pistol that we had gotten with the Jules figure and then of course he comes with this infamous box of donuts and a couple of coffees that he's holding as he's crossing the street and then here's looking at the Butch base looking pretty cool you know get some nice paint details once again I like how the gutter looks right here very well done and get some grass right over there growing within the cracks looks pretty good and then you can see right here this is where it attaches to the Marcellus Wallace base so you just connect the two of them right over here so yeah Butch is driving this way Marcellus Wallace is walking that way and Butch comes with two right hands uh, they're both really look like they're able to hold the katana you know and he has his one katana so I don't know why we need the two hands I did get a little paint on one of them but looking at the katana itself I think they did a really good job I guess this is like a little bit of foreshadowing for Kill Bill, right? I would have never seen that coming. Or it's just really Quentin Tarantino being a Kung Fu fan and everything. But I really like the silver paint that we're seeing right here. It's not too pointy at the end of the sword, or the katana anyway. Nice handle right over there. Ooh, I wonder if it's a Hanzo sword. So you're just looking at the Jules head sculpt, and I think they nailed the likeness to Samuel L. Jackson with this one. Uh, but there is kind of a little obvious discrepancy with the eyes. I think the sculpt came out looking really good. It's just the eye paint is just a bit off over here. Uh, you could 
see, you know, obviously the left side is much higher than the right. So that's a bit bothersome when you look at it closely, you know, farther away. It's not as bothersome, but I really like the face sculpt. I like how the hair came out. I really like the facial hair too. And I missed a little bit of black right over there on the sideburns. The left sideburn looks pretty good though. Yeah, especially looking at him from a profile shot right over here. That looks really good. And looking on the back, looks great. Not a whole lot of detail going on for the rest of it. You know, you get the Reservoir Dogs look going on right over here. I like how the white collar shirt came out. Nice wrinkles in his black suit, looking really good. Nice shiny belt right over there, digging that. And you can't move this tie out of the way or anything. Get some more wrinkles, good looking flesh tone on this guy. And the pants have some nice seams right here and some nice wrinkles. Or it's not a seam. This is a seam right over there. This is the fold. And we get some nice shoes in. Uh, a little bit of paint scuffage right over there on the heel. I think they did a good job with these. He does have peggles at the bottom of his feet. And then here's looking at the back. And we get some wrinkles sculpted in those knee joints right there. And then there's the back of his jacket. Now I think out of the three figures, the Marsalis Wallace figure came out looking the best. I think they nailed the likeness right over here. I can't remember the actor's name off the top of my head, but I think they did a great job. Tiny little scuff right there on his cheek, but you can see the earrings right there. Nice bright gold paint. The eyes look really good. I like the flesh tone, and then there we go on the back of his head right there. That's where the soul came out of him, right? I mean, I mean, we all talked about this when we were kids. I, I don't really know if Quentin Tarantino like really confirmed any of those rumors and everything, but I do like that we get some nice paint shading right here in his jacket. Nice orange paint right over there for his shirt. It looks pretty good. I like it. Nice wrinkles sculpted in there. The hands look pretty good as well. Get some gold on that buckle for the belt. And yeah, I really like how Diamond does the seams, wrinkles, and folds on the pants of these figures. I love that we're getting that shadowing effect right there. And he has his brown shoes looking pretty good. I like them. Not looking too bad. He still has the peg holes. Then there's looking at the back. Yeah, no real wrinkles sculpted in the knees. That's yeah, okay. And then, yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> Don't want to talk about that. Oh, no. And then we have Bruce Willie. I think they did a pretty good job. You know, the, the eyes do look a little bit dull, and there's this thing going on with his left eyebrow. It's like it just kind of gave up, and it's falling down. So, yeah, not the best paint apps right there on that one, or at least the eyebrow anyway, but the eyes look pretty good. And I do think it really does have the likeness of Bruce Willis. Like, if you were to just show this to me, I would think it's Bruce Willis, you know? Got that Bruce Willis nose and forehead. Yeah, so it definitely looks like him to me. And we get some nice sculpted 5 o'clock shadow in there too so that's a nice detail and the hair came out looking pretty good too we got a couple of tones right there the jacket looks great you know I believe this was a brown leather jacket looks really good with that black paint mixed in there and then here's looking at the shirt and everything and then they did a really good job with the denim I really like how this came out you get the lighter blue over the slightly darker blue looking really good nice good wrinkles over here and everything too and I love how the chucks came out wow that is awesome nice dirty shoes I love that Came out looking fantastic. Very pleased with that. You even have that sculpted pattern at the bottom of the chucks down. Wow. Yeah, because I wear Converse shoes, man, so I know how that's supposed to look, and they nailed it. Wow. They really nailed the bottom of the feet. Then looking on the back right over here. Looks great. So yeah, I do like the Bruce Willis figure. Now the articulation on all three of these figures is pretty much exactly the same, except for some minor differences in the ankle articulation, which I will touch on. Anyway, for the head movement, you can get these guys looking upward a bit. They will look down, you get side to side movement, and you also get some head pivot. Shoulders move outward that far, they move down. You could rotate 360, and you get a single jointed elbow, and rotation at the elbow. And then they all have wrists that swivel side to side, and hinge up and down. And then we also get waist articulation, and there's no ab crunching on any of the figures at all and then you get the DCUC gaping crotch pits which actually isn't so bad on these and then you can have them kick forward and then move back upper thigh cut double jointed knees get both of those moving there you go double jointed knees and then they all have ankles that turn side to side over here on the Jules figure his feet won't really move up they'll move up a little bit more with the Marsalis Wallace figure but they move the most upward on the Butch figure right there they all move down and they all have great ankles ankle pivot. Actually, the Jules ankle pivot moves inward even a little more so. Now to measure out these three figures over here, you can see that Butch is standing the tallest, uh, just a bit over seven inches tall, and then Marsalis is 
is standing a little over seven inches and it looks like Jules is closer to seven and a half. I don't like the height between these three. I feel like Marcellus Wallace was supposed to be way taller, like taller than Jules, right? Am I wrong about that? I, I could be mistaken, but I really thought Marcellus Wallace was supposed to be a really huge, huge tall guy. And then to compare these three figures to another Bruce Willis figure, I do have the Hardigan from Sin City. And you can see these do look pretty similar. I actually think this one looks a little bit more like Bruce Willis than the Butch figure though, but yeah, both very good. Then here's the three figures next to Bruce Willis's nemesis. We have the Kevin Smith or the Blunt Man figure over here. I'm going to have these posed fighting each other. I think that's going to be great. And I really wish I had another figure to compare to these three that wasn't centered around Bruce Willis. I really wish Diamond Select Toys would give us a Marvel Select Nick Fury. That would be great to have a different Samuel L. Jackson figure. But for the time being, here's all three figures next to the Marvel Legends Big Time Letdown Spider-Man. So these figures are not 100% perfect. Uh, my biggest gripes being the eyes on the Jules figure and the height of the Marcellus Wallace. I keep wanting to say Winton Marcellus. Most of you guys don't know who he is. But anyway, I still think these are great figures to have. I'm very happy to have them and I'm excited to put them up on display on my shelf. I've had them alongside this review station for quite some time now, so now I can finally put them up on my shelf. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of these three figures. Which one's your favorite out of the three? I'm curious to know. If you want to subscribe for more Shardimus Prime videos, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as hitting the notification bell. And just to throw it out there, there are still legendary collector t-shirts available at shardimusprime.net and patrons get a discount on those. And I got to thank all the patrons for supporting this YouTube channel. Your guys' help is very much appreciated. If you're interested in the Shardimus Prime perks and giveaways, please check the link in the description below. And if you want to see a photo gallery of images, those will also be over at shardimusprime.net. I'll catch you guys later. Peace. Shardimus Prime videos. Hey, you should click one. Yeah, click on one of them. Or subscribe if you haven't.